This presentation is going to be a little bit of a transition. We're going to start by looking at some time I spent in the village over the second Christmas that they celebrate here, the one on January 6th. And then at the end, I want to talk a little bit about Millennial Development Goals and some of the resources that are in the course related to those. I was honored for the holiday to get invited to Vitali's family's Christmas celebration, the village of Rachia, which apparently means cold, and it had something to do with the legend is when the Turks came through, they found a body of water that was exceptionally cold, so they named the area Cold Rachia. What you're seeing here in the next few slides, I just took some pictures of the house that I stayed at. I always find it interesting that they like to decorate walls, uh, both inside and out, as you'll see in a minute. This is on the outside, etched right into the side of their two-story block house, which was very nice. This is a picture of their yard. Their actual house is just to the left. You can see a slight bit of walls. The greenhouse to the right, behind the old Soviet car that isn't running anymore, the little greenhouse to the right there, was the original house on this property and it's where they lived for a 10 year period while they built the house. That's fairly common here. What you see right back there is just what it looks like. It's the well with one of those ornate tin coverings that we've seen in other places. Just behind me is an outhouse. Seem to have not gotten a picture of, but it's a very nice outhouse for outhouses. As nice as the house is, and you're going to see the inside of the house in a minute, it was a two story house with four rooms on each floor. One of the problems continues to be in the villages, both in terms of health and just making it a less than pleasant place to live, is that there's still no indoor plumbing. This is another example of what I was talking about as far as wall coverings. This is painted right on blocks, what looks like paper folds there, or actually the edges of the blocks that the painting is put on. This is on the second floor in a room right outside the bedroom I'm going to show you in a minute. Here's a picture of the bed in the bedroom that they gave me. You can see they have a tapestry on the wall there. I'm sure from how nice this room was that this is the parents bedroom and they gave it to me for the two nights I was there over their holiday. That's the kind of hospitality that I see all the time when I go places over here and in Ukraine. This is Vitaly's cousin and his aunt. What his cousin there is doing is singing a very long and complicated Christmas song. It's a tradition, once he finished with this, Vitaly's mother gave him a bag of candy and a traditional bread. This is the Christmas Eve family meal. That picture was taken from about the center of the table, so there were about that many people on the other side of me as well. This was in one room on the second floor. You can see some of the foods on there, and I have a close-up of some more here in a minute, but there's salads, there's meats, there's bread. And here, staring right up at me during the entire meal, was the fish, one of the main courses. They put it in front of me because I was the guest of honor. But you can also see here in the foreground some cakes. There's a cake, the thing in the bottom right-hand corner, that looks like the back of a fish fin. It's actually shaped like fish, but it's a chocolate, uh, sort of a chocolate pudding in the shape of a fish. All kinds of great food there. It's quite a party. And right in the middle of this meal, we heard music downstairs. There were Christmas carolers who brought their own music. You can see that there's a saxophone and an accordion. It's a group of young men and young women. I was told when I asked them that they were partly from a local Baptist church, and partly they were young people from the village that usually lived in Chisinau who happened to be Baptist and were home visiting, so they went out with the local group. It was nice. Christmas morning, time to go up to church. This is actually a road right outside of Vitaly's family's house. Go straight up to the church. You can see right there in the foreground that Interesting double bridge. It's a bridge over a very small creek, although he says it used to be a bigger river and does get a little bit bigger in the springtime. But apparently somebody's diverted water for a pond, so they've lost some of the river. But you can see there's two separate decks for the bridge with a separation in between. Not sure why they built it that way. 
It certainly prevents any cars from going up there if that was part of the intention. And you can see the Orthodox Church overseeing the town. We got to church a little bit after the service started, and when they realized that I wanted to take pictures, one of the old men sent somebody up to ask the priest, who actually responded by nodding his head in the middle of the service. They did say I could go right up front and take pictures from the front of the church, but I didn't really feel comfortable doing that. So I took some from the floor, and some I went up on the little balcony that all the, all the Orthodox churches seem to have overlooking it that the young people tend to go up there. This is one of the pictures I took from the floor. Here you can see right in front of me is where the women tend to stand on one side of the church and the men tend to stand on the other side of the church. And they do stand. They don't have pews in most Orthodox churches over here. In the middle of the picture there, you can see that there's a lot of children, but that was really a special thing because it's Christmas, as you're going to see in a minute. Another picture from the balcony. To the left there, you can see that they actually have tables of food that they bring in before. People stand and eat before. They were standing and eating after. In the top right, you can see a little like a tent and three little girls there. They actually did a little song and presentation about the birth of Christ that went along with the priest's sermon. Here you can see, if you look closely, the priest is singing with a group of young men, a couple of whom are his sons. One of the things about the Orthodox Church is that they do allow their priest to get married. But right in front of that group, you can see the back of Santa Claus. Santa Claus brought gifts. That's why the children are there. After the priest and these young men sing the song to Santa Claus, it's a song of appreciation. Santa Claus got down and gave gifts to each and every one of the children. Once again, it was basically a bag of candy. That's the traditional gift. It shows you a little bit of what the balcony looked like. You may recognize those two guys. That's Vitaly and Jan. They were also with me last weekend at the New Year's Eve celebration downtown. This is a view of some of the village from the church. You saw how it was sitting up on the hill. The big building across there is what they call their cultural center. Apparently, during Soviet times, every village had a cultural center. There's swimming pools, music rooms, billiards rooms, a place for young people, old people, libraries. It was really the center of the village activities and meetings. We're going to go look at that in a minute, but I just want you to note those square concrete houses, even though I didn't get a good far shot of Vitaly's house. His house looked very much on the outside like those square concrete houses that you see in the bottom right there, like that blue one. This is the outside of the cultural center as it looks now. Clearly hasn't had any upkeep in several years. Vitaly, who is 22, has good memories of this place from his childhood. So it's probably been 10 to 15 years at least that this has not any upkeep, which of course coincides with the end of the Soviet Union. That last picture and this one are both of the same room. This used to be a small wading pool. The kids played in it. This is the balcony overlooking it. The other one was a straight on shot. The amount of money that it would take to even bring this back to usability would be more than it would take to tear it down and build a new one at this point. As you can see here, if you look closely, this was a music room. People could come here, borrow trumpets, trombones, other musical instruments that you see there, and it just fell into complete and utter disrepair. Although this building is really wide open because one of the back doors was broken in, some of those instruments are probably worth money, but they still continue to just sit there like the other things we're going to see in a minute. This is a wall of a room that was just completely littered with memorabilia from the Soviet era. Apparently this wall says something about heroes of the revolution, they will not be forgotten, or something like that. But you can see these are people from the town that were involved in one way or another during the Soviet Union. But all around, there are pictures in frames, there are frame documents, one of which I thought was interesting because I remembered when 
Gorbachev in 85 made an announcement that he was going to try to cut down on the amount of alcohol that was being drunk in the Soviet Union because it was affecting productivity. He put out this big proclamation, and there on the wall, this proclamation is still sitting. So this was just fascinating for somebody like me who enjoys history and political science, and would be for any history buff. And here on another wall in the next room, once again, you can see some of the things there littering the floor, same type of stuff, but a large picture of Lenin, Engels, and Marx. And if you just type those three words into Google and hit images, you'll see that this is a fairly common image, not this particular picture, but the idea of Lenin, Engels, and Marx being the three main characters that brought the Soviet Union to what it was. After we left the cultural center, we walked around town and I took some pictures, but a couple that I thought you might find interesting are a couple remnants of the Soviet era. This hammer and sickle that you see on the corner of this building, this building was and is the town's municipal building. One thing I didn't mention earlier is this town is was about a four-hour bus trip north of Chisinau. It's actually just north of Balt. This is another fairly common image in the Soviet Union. It's in front of a monument to soldiers in the wars. Russian lady, hand over the heart, other hand reaching out with what appears to be a victory wreath. Interesting thing was, uh, neither Vitaly or John said that they had ever had anybody explain to them what the symbolism of this person was. And finally, here's a monument that really has no political significance whatsoever. That's Mihail Eminescu, who's a famous poet here. Right beneath me is a public spring. The water is supposed to be clean and sweet. In fact, it was good. I tasted it out of the spring. comes right out of a pipe in the ground. Been there forever. Apparently, he was a poet, and one of the things he wrote about in one of his poems are springs of sweet water coming out of the ground, and that's apparently what this is talking about. Before the holidays hit, we started talking about Millennium Development Goals. Now that the holidays are more or less over, let's get back to those. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, I wanted to make today a transition, so the pictures were some of the fun things and interesting things they did on the holidays in the village. What I would like you to do now is to review the two resources that are in this week's readings. The first one has to do with the Millennium Development Goals in Eastern Europe. One of the things I mentioned earlier is that I'm actually doing a course, a college-level course now, on Millennium Development Goals in Eastern Europe. And so this is one of the introductions to that. But this will bring us back into getting our minds back into thinking about the Millennial Development Goals. One of the other things I did was a presentation in Second Life, which is a 3D virtual world that you might be hearing quite a bit about. It's been in the New York Times. People have been talking about it. And we've built a place there to do training. And so I thought it would be interesting to do a little presentation in there on Millennial Development Goals. And I did. And what you'll see is the text of that and some of the video shots from that presentation. But that was a lot of fun as well. So next week we start looking once again at Millennial Development Goals. One at a time we'll go through them. So I hope you enjoyed this trip to the village, and I look forward to seeing your comments in the forums.